the adoration for what you have done, for what you are doing, for what you are going to do. We thank you for making it possible for us to be in your midst today, to be among those who are counted to be among the living that can worship and praise you. We give you adoration, we give you all glory because you deserve it. Yes, be that exalted in Jesus' name. Amen. Be that magnified in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I say, Father, as we go into your word this afternoon, Father Lord God, we want you to come and speak your word to your people from the truth in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father Lord God, we want to give us the hearts to receive from you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I say, Father, we pray that you give us the heart of flesh to receive from you and to do your will at all times in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father Lord God, we pray right now that right, whatever we are facing, whatever mountain that is before us, that looks insurmountable, at the end of your word, you make it to become plain before us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Father. Thank you, King of Glory. We give you praise, we give you adoration. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon. Good morning. Um, I think it's morning or afternoon anyway. It is afternoon, yeah. Good afternoon and welcome to Amazing Foundation Ministry International once again. And um, today is the last Sunday of the month of March. You know, March is gone. And we are still here to the glory of God. Because our God is always faithful. Every time he's always there for us. We give him praise, we give him adoration for making it possible, for giving all that power to be around, to be here, and to worship you. He says, glory, glory, glory to your holy name. Um, today, we have a lot to say, especially according to what is going on around the world today. Because, uh, you know, what God is in my heart connects with the situation that is going on with the world right now. And uh, I believe we all know that the whole world needs solution right now. Yes, the whole world is looking for solution. We are looking for cure. Cure to what is happening around the world. And then, unfortunately, we are looking in wrong places for this cure. We are looking in wrong places for this solution. Unfortunately, we have not humbled ourselves. We have not looked up to where our help should be. So, and I believe God should open our hearts and our heart and our heart and our eyes, and for us to be able to see what He wants us to see, so that we can come to the throne of grace and mercy and receive grace from You, so that all these things that is looking so insurmountable before us, that looks like it is something that we cannot overcome. We will know that it is nothing before you. Mm. Because you are the only one that can make things happen. And that is why it is important for us to acknowledge God in everything we do. Whatever position we are in, it is not by our power, it is not by our mind, but by the Spirit of God. Mm. So it is important that we acknowledge that Spirit of God in everything we do. If you are the head of state, if you are the one that is in charge of millions of people or thousands of people, you should know that it's not by your power that you are able to get there. But what you need to do whenever you are faced with any situation that is beyond you or any time, at every point in time, it is important for us to look out to God because he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Mm -hmm. So today, our focal point, uh, the Bible that we'll be focusing on is Romans chapter 5, verse 12 to 22. That is the focal Bible passage for today and then we have a bit to talk about it. And that will give us a lot of understanding on how sin came into the world, how we have been disobedient, how we have forsaken God, how we have not done what we are supposed to do, how we need to come back to the truth and look up to Christ as our author and the finisher of our faith. Um, I title the, to this sermon as Christ, the cure and the gift and the gift of, the, of life. Or you can make it look up to Christ for solution. Look up to Christ and be saved. So therefore, today, I want us to quickly read the passage before we go on so that we can understand when I'm talking from, from the scriptures, we will, we will be able to relate with whatever that the Holy Spirit is bringing and unpacking <coughs> for us this afternoon. And that is Romans chapter 5, verse 12 to 21. And then 
he goes thus. <clears throat> Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all are sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not seen after the similitude of Adam's transgression, which is the figure of him that was to come, but not as the offense. So also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift of the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many, and not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For it is by one man's offense that reign by one. Much more they which received abundance of grace, of the gift of righteousness, shall reign in by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so that so by the, the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sins abounded, grace did much more abound. Mm -hmm. And the last uh, verse, verse 21, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. You know, today, it is all about going to the root, the root cause of all situations that we are in today. What is the root cause? Why are we in this, this situation that we are in? It's because of our disobedience. Our disobedience starts from one man. And that is why we can see that this passage has got like three different links. We have the link of Adam to humanity and Jesus. We have another link of the distinction between Adam and Jesus. And another link that has to do with the coming of the law that make us to understand that when you sin, there's always uh, a punishment for the sin. So therefore, that is why the scripture was telling us here that through one man, cause and sin came into the world. And through another, kill and solution came. You see, through one man, sin and cause came into the world. You know, Adam was the first man created by God. And we all know the story. I don't have to go and be relating the story of Adam again. But we all knew, you can understand and relate with, when Adam disobeyed, when he rebelled against God, what did God do? God cursed Adam. I don't think we understand and we still remember that. God cursed Adam. He cursed Adam, he cursed the ground, he cursed everything. Because of what? Disobedience of Adam. And this curse was cured by who? By Christ when he came into this world mm. to come and die for our sin. Mm. To come and relate, re, reconcile us back to God. So therefore, it is important for us to know the root cause of what is going on. Why are we in this situation that we are in? You understand? Mm. Because Adam caused, brought cause on mankind. Mm. Through just a singular act of disobedience, the scripture was telling us that. As you can see, you know, verse 12 to 14 was telling us that. That is, 
Therefore, by one man, sin entered into the world, mm -hmm. and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Mm -hmm. Can we see? All men have sinned. But this sin was passed on to all men by a person mm -hmm. in the name of Adam. Mm -hmm. That is why the scripture is always telling us that all have sinned, and we have come out of the glory of God. No one can claim righteousness except the righteousness of God. So therefore... Who are we to now say we are perfect in everything we do? Who are we not to acknowledge God in whatever situation we are in when we all know that we are all sin and have come short of the glory of God? Mm. When, we all know, when we all know that it is true, one man, that we all became a sinner. And there is no righteousness in us except the righteousness of God. Mm. So now, the curse that we are talking about came through Adam. And Adam happens to be the one that brought this upon the mankind mm. through a singular act of disobedience. Mm. Disobedience. Disobedience. But God being God, because God brought one man again, Christ, mm -hmm. the cure Amen. Through his own obedience. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can see one man brought what? Curse and disobedience to mankind. Curse, sin, death, and disobedience to mankind. And the other one, Christ, came, brought cure. He brought redemption. He brought reconciliation, he brought restoration, he brought us back and gave us the cure to that curse mm -hmm. that Adam brought upon us. Mm -hmm. So that that curse can no longer have dominion over us. Mm -hmm. Therefore, God himself, because he knows the, the hand from the beginning, he has already provided the cure even before the curse. Can you see our God? How awesome our God can be. He has provided the cure even before the curse. So why are we now running elter skelter, looking up and down for cure where there is no cure? When God has given us the everlasting cure to our curse, so that that curse cannot have dominion over us. You know, in this passage we see the link between Adam and mankind, how mankind became a sinner through Adam. And then the link between mankind, Adam and Jesus, how Jesus had to come to come and remove that curse, the sin, the death, through the death on the cross of Calvary for us. So that is why I look upon everyone when we are all looking so unhappy, we look so weary, we look afraid, we look like there is nothing that can happen because we like look like hopeless in this situation, mm. you know, and that situation is like, why are we looking hopeless? Have we forgotten what the scripture says in Romans chapter 5, verse 12 to 21? When he's telling us about Christ came to give us the cure to the curse. Mm. And that cure is still with us mm -hmm. forever and ever. Mm -hmm. So why are we running out of skelter? Why are we not coming mm -hmm. to, the, to the realization that we are the one that is making life difficult for ourselves because of our, uh, we are not acknowledging God who has given us that cure and we are not going back to him. And seek that cure and say, Father, you are the cure to this curse. You are the only cure to this curse that we have found ourselves in. And that is why we could see when in chapter, in verse 12 to 14, when he was talking about, in verse 14 especially, when he said, Nevertheless, let it rain from Adam to Moses, even over them that have not seen after the similitude of Adam's transgressions. Who is the figure of him who that was to come. And we see, it's the same figure of Christ that was to come. And what happened? 
through his own disobedience, he brought curse, death, sin upon mankind. And now, the same person of life, of the same of figure, came and he brought us light. He brought us solution. He brought us care to our situation. So, what is the problem that we have? Why are we losing hope? When God has already given us hope. Why are we hopeless? When God has already provided solution to our problem. Why are we looking dejected when the cure to the curse has already been made from everlasting to everlasting? What is our problem? Why are we not coming back to realize that there is nothing that has happened now, that is happening now, that has not happened before? Do you think what is happening now has never happened before? It has happened before. We all know the story of the land of Egypt. We all know we can relate with the templates that happened in the land of Egypt. We can all relate. We could see how it could have looked like that a whole nation was shut down by the plague that came upon them. We only have one plague and we are all running elter skelter. Just one plague. Just what? One plague. God gave solution to ten plagues in the scriptures. He gave solutions to what? Ten plagues in the scriptures. Now we only have one plague. We are battling just one plague and the whole world has shut down. The whole world is hopeless. The whole world is clueless. We cannot do anything. The whole economy has shut down. Social status, no more. School, non-existence. Why? Because we have forgotten that the care to the curse has already been provided from time immemorial by God himself. But all we need to do is to acknowledge him. Come back to him and look up to the cross. Look up to what? Look up to the cross. I want us to quickly go to the um, what was it called? What happened in the wilderness to the Israelites? You know, because when the curse come upon the people of God, God always provide solution to that curse. Amen. God always provide what solution to the curse. The Israelites, they were people of God. They were delivered by God Himself through His, his servant Moses. I was talking about the plague, ten plague in the land of Egypt that time. It was Moses that God sent to go and deliver the people of Israel. And he provides solution to the templates out there and so many other things. And he gave us an understanding that our God is all in all. Our God is over everlasting. He is the one that has solution in his hand. So every situation, no matter how big or how small that situation is. In Numbers chapter 21, verse 4 to 9. We could see there how Israelites sin after they just won a battle and they started grumbling against God about food, about situation. They have forgotten about what God has done for them. Let us quickly go there and read the passage so that we can understand and relate with what I'm talking about here. Here we can see how curse came upon the people of Israel. And the same way God provides solution. And those who are ready to look up to that solution were the only ones that were saved. Can we see? Only those who were ready to do what? To relate to that, with that solution were the only ones that were saved. Let's quickly read. And Not they journeyed. Back. Thank you. Numbers 21, 4 to 9. Yes, please. And they journeyed from Mount Or by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. Yeah. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore, have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water. And our soul knows that this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. And they beat the, the people. And much people of Israel died. Mm. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord, 
that you take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fairy serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is beaten, when he looked upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Amen. Amen. We can see in this very passage what the Israelites did. You can imagine they were joining from another place. They have won so many battles. They have won what? So many battles. And then, because they were joining, and now they got discouraged on the way. And they started speaking against God. You see? Verse, verse 5 says, And the people spake against God and against Moses. Can we see? Against God and against Moses. Because Moses is the representative of God. And that is why when God has sent someone as his own representative, we should not speak against the person. Because the person is no longer representing himself, but he's representing God. So, and wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness, and for there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loath, loathed this light bread. So we see how Israelites brought curse upon themselves through what? Through the word of their mouth, through their own disobedience, through their own rebellion. And what happened? God cast them, God sent a fiery serpent. To bite them, to kill them. So we see that there is no reaction without an action. All this we are talking about corona, corona, coronavirus, COVID 19. There is always an action before a reaction. We are forsaking God, we are so full of ourselves. We have abandoned God. We believe that all this that is happening, all this advancement in technology, is by our own understanding. It's by our own power. We have solution to everything. We have forgotten the creator of the heaven and the earth that has the power to make to be and to make it not to be. We have forgotten that he is the alpha and the omega. He is the beginning and the ending. Without him, nothing was made. And without him, nothing will exist. Mm. So, it is important that we acknowledge this mm. in the situation that we are in right now. There is no reaction without an action. Our action brought this upon us. As we can see, we have forsaken God. Look here, the Israelites, they sinned before God sends a fear is happening. A curse was brought upon them. And then, the same God that brought curse upon them, what did he do? Let us look at it in verse 7. And therefore, the people came to Moses because they came to realization of what they have done. Have we come to realization of our own situation, of our own, where we have missed it? Where we have brought another curse upon ourselves in the world? What have we done? Let us go back to the roots of our situation. What has brought this curse upon us? The Israelites realized it on time. And what did they do? They quickly came back. And therefore, in verse 7, Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord. That he take away the serpent from us. And Moses prayed for the people. Amen. Amen. What are we waiting for? Mm. As a country. As a nation. Mm. What are we waiting for? Mm. If Israelites as a nation. Could mm. come to realization of where they have missed it. Could come to realization where the curse came upon them. And they quickly retraced their steps back. To the roots. And they went to Moses and said, Moses, please help us. We have sinned against our father and we have sinned against you. They acknowledged their sin. 
who are we not to acknowledge our sin? Because the scripture has already told us in Romans 5, verse 20 to 14, that through one man, came, sin came to the world. Through one man, we all became sinners. Through one man, we all became sin. And through another man, solution, cure, was preferred and brought upon us by God. Therefore, the people of Israel, they came to the realization of where they have missed it. And they came to Moses. And what happened? And the Lord said unto Moses, verse 8, Make thee a fairy serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is beaten, when he looketh up to it, to it upon it, shall live. <laughs> Our God is awesome God. Amen. Awesome God. He works in mysterious ways. Amen. God sends a curse. A fiery serpent to bite them because of their rebellion, because of their disobedience. And the same serpent, mm. now can we see, is being used mm. as a skill, as a solution mm. to the bite mm. that they have received from the serpent. Can we see the connection? Yes, right. Our God mm. is God. That can do anything in his power. It looks like it is foolish to human understanding. You understand? Yeah. Why? Because how can you say, now make a fairy serpent again and raise it on the pole for everyone that looks upon it should be saved? You see? But what happened? Many people disregarded. That instruction, singular instruction, just look up to that thing. Because they were like looking at it. Does it make any sense? Snake has beaten us, serpent has beaten us, and then to look up to another brass serpent that was made, a calf serpent, a serpent made of bronze or bronze. And now they are telling us to look up to it. But God Himself, in His infinite mercy, can use anything as a point of contact for our care. So why are we to question what he has given to us as a symbol of kill? So what happened? And Moses made the serpent, verse 9, of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Amen? Amen. Look at this. Moses has got the kill. Now Moses did not now as we are in this world now, and say, okay, the serpent is now up there. Before you can look up to the serpent, you have to pay a certain amount of money. You understand? Mm. Moses did not try to milk the situation. He did according to the instruction given by God. You understand? And at the same time, he didn't have to it. And he didn't remove from it. We did not have that, that Moses after they have looked up to the serpent, he gave them a oil. Or he gave them uh, a, a water. Or he gave them anointing oil. Or anything to go and rub off on where the snake has bitten them. You really see? He only gave them the instruction just to look up. And after that, you are ill. Go home and you are what? Ill. You are cured of your disease. But what happened? Many die. What? Because of that disobedience. If you read it more to the end of the passage, we will see that not everyone obeyed the instruction by Moses. Therefore, as we can see in this very passage, a curse came upon the land of Israel and God proffered solution. Emmanuel, and God proffered solution. So the situation at hand in a mysterious way, you know, and because God is an awesome God, He is a gracious God, He is a God full of grace. He did not look at the sin of the Israelite, He did not allow them to perish. The same way God will not allow us Amen. in this world to perish now. Amen. All we need to do is to do like the Israelite did. 
and know where we have missed it and retrace our step back to our Creator and retrace our step back to the cure that God has preferred for us, that He has given to us through Christ. Christ, likewise, Christ was raised on the cross for us to look up to in order for us to be saved. As the bronze of what or serpent was raised in the wilderness. The same way Christ was raised for us as the cure to our problem. Do we understand? Mm -hmm. And Christ himself liking it, he connected it in the book of John. I want us to quickly look at that. In the book of John chapter, chapter 3, verse 14 to 15. And Christ himself said this. He said, And as Moses lifted up serpents in the wilderness, even so was the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Can we see the connection now? Yes. Because that is what I'm trying to link us up with how the what happened to the Israelites, how Christ himself is now putting himself forward to us as a cure. To our curse. That he will be lifted up so that we can have the cure to our curse. Mm -hmm. And that Christ is what I'm presenting to us today. Mm -hmm. Again, the cure of the whole world. The cure to the solution to the problem that we have. The solution to this coronavirus that we are facing. That we are, the whole world now became, we have become what? hopeless we are so afraid our faith has been shaken to the root but we can see what the Israelites did they came back they retraced themselves back to where they have missed it are we retracing our steps as a nation as a country as a city as the people of this world so that we can get the cure that God has preferred to our problem. Now, Christ himself was telling us that he's been raised for us on the, on the tree so that we can look up to him and get solution to our problem. Now, we the people of the world, we as a nation, let us now come back to the realization of the cure that God has already given to us through Christ that came into this world to repeal the death, the sin, and the destruction, and the curse that has come upon us. So that we can put an end to this coronavirus that looks like it's an insurmountable mountain before us. We have forgotten the scripture says, Who are you, O mountain, before Serubabin? You are turn to plain. And this coronavirus can be wiped out in one day. God can cleanse our land, can heal our land in just one singular day. All we need to do is look up to the solution that he has given to us. Retrace our step back to where we have missed it, just like Israelites did in the book of Numbers chapter, uh, chapter 21, verse 4 to 9. Christ himself is offering himself to us. In John chapter 3, verse 14 to 15, and he says that, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. So God does not want us to perish. He wants, what does he want us to have? Eternal life. And he has given us Christ as a solution to our problem. Romans chapter 3 verse 10 says, As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. Can we see? No righteous. All of us, we have all come short of the glory of God. All of us have sinned. Let us come to the realization of this. And let us come and humble ourselves. As it is in Chronicles, First Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, that says, If my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and depart from their wicked way and pray. I will look down from heaven. I will, I will forgive their sins and I will heal their life. Mm -hmm. So therefore, why don't we come to their realization again 
and go back to God. God is telling us that Christ has been lifted up for us to have care to our curse. And what is that curse we are having now? Coronavirus is that curse that is facing us. And we have that care in Christ that was lifted up for us on the cross of Calvary. Second, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto, we, unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are seeing that the power of the cross, it is there for us to be saved. It is there for us to tap into. We have to tap into the power of the cross. Because God has given us a solution to our problem. A fiery serpent was raised in the wilderness for the land, for the, for the people of Israel, for them to be saved from the curse that they were faced. But they realized where they had missed it. And they went back. And departed from their sin. And they asked for forgiveness. The same way we have to do the same thing. We have to come to realization of where we have missed it. Where we are so full of ourselves, where we have, where we, we believe that we can do all things. We have forgotten that we can only do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Without Him, we can do nothing. We can see. The Prime Minister of Italy acknowledged God last week, Sunday. I was reading it. He said, We have done everything that is humanly possible, but nothing is working. Instead of it getting better, it's getting worse. Now, the only solution we can look up to now is from the sky. God, have mercy on us. Can we see a whole prime minister of a nation? That is what God wants us to come as a nation, as the whole people of the world, to the realization of his, his domination of this whole world is in his hand. He got the whole world in his hand, as the song says. You know, a whole prime minister, the number one citizen of a nation, could humble himself. But God does not need only one country to humble himself. He wants us as the whole world collectively. Let us learn from what this man said last week Sunday. That the understanding of man has failed man. The knowledge and the wisdom of man has already failed man right now. And the only solution for us is to look up to Christ being raised for us mm. as the care to that curse that is has besieged us. Because God himself has profound solution to our problem. Through one man, curse, sin, death came into the world. And through another man, what came? Solution, care, reconciliation, restoration, solution, everything. So now, I'm presenting to us again this same man that came to die for us on the cross of Calvary, to die to restore us back to God, to die to bring solution to our situation, yes. to die to ensure that we are not dead in our sin, we don't die in our sin, to come and show us the way to eternal life so that we don't perish. He doesn't want sinners to perish. He doesn't want sinners to die. He doesn't want sinners to die. He wants us to come to realization and repentance so that we can embrace salvation that is offering us. Why are we now putting ourselves in this situation? Why don't you come back to God? Why don't you look up to that cross that has been put up for us as a solution? Christ was hung on the cross for us. And the scripture says, curse is the man that sinned. Curse. Is the man that is hung on the tree. And Christ himself make himself the curse that was hung on the tree for us. So that we can have the cure, the solution to whatever situation that we are faced. Especially when we acknowledge him and we come to the realization of where we are wasted. The whole world has wasted. In every way. But instead for us to acknowledge it, we are thinking we can use our own knowledge and understanding to cure and to prove our solution to this. You know, we can see in first uh, John 6, verse 37b, and it says, And he that cometh to me 
I will no wise cast out. Hmm. Christ is telling us that he that comes to him, that he will not in any wise cast the person out. Hmm. Let us come back to Christ because he's telling us, he's inviting us today. Come back to me. Come back to me because I will not cast you out. I will not look up onto your sin. I have forgotten about your sin. I have forgiven your sin. All you need to do is confess it and I will refer that kill to that curse that has beset you as a nation and as a people of the world. Let us come because he's inviting us. He is telling us that he wants us to come. He wants us to come to him because he's not going to cast us out. We should not be thinking, oh, if we go to him because of all this that we have done, he will not embrace us. He loves the sinner. He does not want the sinner to die. He wants them to be saved. And that is why he's telling us today, come back to me. I will not cast you away. I am the key to this curse that has beset you. I have been hung on the tree for you to be saved. I have been hung on the tree just like the serpent was raised in the wilderness. So that the people of Israel that were beaten by the serpent could live. The same way that I belong on the tree that was never besieged you. The solution is for you to look up to that cross. That I've been hung on. And you'll find the solution there. Because all you need to do is humble yourself. Confess your sin. Pray unto me. And I will heal you. And I will heal your land. And I will provide care to your curse. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hang on a tree. Can we see? Can we see that, cursed, that Christ himself has made himself curse for us? So that we are no longer under curse anymore. He made himself a curse for us so that we can have care. That is what Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 says. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is every man that hangs on a tree. What else do you want God to do for you? What else do you want God to do for us? God has shown us that the only way is to come back. We chase our step back to him and then we have the cure to this coronavirus. Let the whole world profess God. Let us depart from our wicked ways. Let us open up on our sin. The scriptures already told us that no man is righteous. No one should claim righteousness in this matter. We have all come short of the glory of God. We have all sinned. Sin has come into the world through one man, that is Adam. And solution has come back into the world again through one man, that is Christ. Yeshua, the one that came to die so that he can be cursed for us and be a cure to our curse. Because Romans chapter 3 then says, it's a, as it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. That way, who are we to claim righteousness when our own righteousness is of God? I am telling us today, and myself included, and let us do like the people of Israel did in the, in the wilderness when they rebel against God. When they sin against God and man. They sin against God and Moses. And God punished them. And the same way they quickly came to realization of their situation, of where they have missed it. And they quickly ran back to God and to Moses for solution. And God provides solutions. And they embraced that solution. Now I am telling us today that we should embrace the solution God has given to us. And that solution is Christ that was on the cross of Calvary about 2,000 years ago. That has came to this world to be hanged on the tree as a curse to bring care to our curse. It is written that there is no man that is righteous. No, not one. Now let us read. And the book of Isaiah chapter 45 verse 22 says, Look unto me and be ye saved in all the ends of the house, for I am God and there is no there is none else. 
So God is telling us that we should look up to him and be what saved from this coronavirus. Coronavirus is just one plague. God brought ten plagues upon the people of Egypt and he provides solution to that plague. You know? God provides solution to ten plagues that happen in the land of Egypt. It's only one plague that we are faced by the people of the world and the whole thing has turned upside down. It is God that can help us. It is God that can give us solution to this our situation. How can we now come back to the realization of what God has done? God has given us that cure. Let us embrace the cure. Let us embrace that cure because God has given us the cure and solution in Christ as it is left to us to humble ourselves, forsake our wicked ways, and look up to Christ for our cure. Because Christ is the cure to this coronavirus that we are faced today. Christ has paid the price and you don't have to bring anything but just look up to the cross for remedy until you are saved. Look up to the cross as an antidote, as the cure to the plague that we are being faced. And we know that if we come down from our high horse and we acknowledge God, like the Prime Minister of, Egypt, of, of, uh, of uh, Italy acknowledged last week, he came down from his high horse and he said, all the people who are of this world, the knowledgeable of this world, the people who are wise of this world, the Haitophels of this world, they have come together and all their counsel have come to foolishness. And God is telling us that the only solution to this problem is for us to look upon the cross, upon the man that was hung upon the cross for us. As a song that said, you the man upon the cross. I see. Upon his shoulder. Okay. I hear my mocking voice. Among the scoffers. It was my sin that put him there. I can't forgive an answer. Oh, no, I know it. That I think my His death has paid our ransom. Why are we? perishing when we have the cure in our heart. When God has given us the cure, Christ has paid the ransom. Christ, the cure to our situation. The cure to our curse. The cure to our sin. The cure to the problem of coronavirus. But let us come back to him. Emmanuel, let us come back to the realization of what God has laid before us, the solution to the whole world. Remember, through one man, sin came to the world, death came to the world, curse came to the world, and through another, solution has been preferred for us. Solution has been given to us because God himself has given us that solution. Christ, the Son of God. Christ is giving us the eternal life. Let us come to him. Let us come to the realization where we have missed it. Let us humble ourselves. Let us come to him and look up to the cross. And we shall be saved. Because Christ himself has said that if you come to me, I will not cast you away. I will not cast you away because I have come to die for you. I have come to become cursed for you to be so that you can have cure. So that is why he doesn't want death. He doesn't want the sinners to die. But he wants them to be saved. Today, I'm imploring us, all of us, from the high to the low, that we should come back 
to the realization of where we have missed it so that we can move on and we can continue and ensure that this coronavirus is defeated only through our own realization that the only solution that has been given to us is the Christ that came to hang on the cross. Let us look up to him. He is the cure to our solution, to our problem. He is the cure to our problem. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, we thank you. Thank you King of glory, we honor you. Thank you we thank you for your word which you have spoken to your people today. Thank you, Lord. We thank you because you have given us the cure thank to the Lord. curse that has besieged us mm. as the people of the world. Thank we God. thank you because you have not given us nor forsaken us. We thank you because you loved us even though in our sin. Because you said in your word, you said even though there is no man that is righteous, despite that, you are still giving us that chance that hope in this hopeless situation that we have found ourselves. And that is why we are now praying right now that God, we have sinned against you. We have been too full of ourselves. We have come against your will. We have done things that are not of you. Father, Lord God, we are humbling ourselves right now. And I'm standing in the gap for the people of the world right now. That you should forgive us our sin in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. That you should look upon us and heal our land in the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. And that cure that you have given unto us, Christ on the cross, that we can look up to him and be cured and be saved in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. That we can come down from our high cross. We can come Jesus. down from our understanding. Because the scripture says... Trust in the Lord with all your heart yes. and lean not on your own understanding. Yes. In all your ways acknowledge Him yes. and shall direct your path. Yes. Today we are acknowledging you yes. as the only one that can provide solution to every situation that is mm. prestigious. We are acknowledging you today that our wisdom has failed us. We are acknowledging you today that our understanding has failed us. We are acknowledging you today that you are the only one that can make things to happen and our make things not to happen. We are acknowledging you today that you are the only one that can provide chaos to every situation. Yes. Father, we humble ourselves today. We have come to the throne of mercy and grace. Father, Lord God, you said in your way, you have mercy on those who you have mercy on. Yes. Father, Lord God, we are praying right now that you have mercy on people of the whole world today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, Lord God, give us that grace. Let your grace continually be sufficient for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, Lord God, the way we stop the plague in the land of Egypt. Father, Lord God, stop this plague of coronavirus in this world in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, Lord God, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Because you said in your word, you said one shall chase one thousand and two shall chase ten thousand. Yes, and the people of the old world are coming together right now to chase trillions. Because we know through you, we can do brilliant things. Because we have come to the realization where we have missed it. And we have received our step back because we know there is no reaction without our action. Father Lord God, may you grant us the grace. Because you have given us the gift of life, which is Christ that yes, came to die on the cross of Calvary for us. Father Lord God, we we, we, we pray right now that that solution, the cure that you have given to us, let it radiate upon every land of the world in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let it radiate upon all the people of the heart in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Everyone that has been besieged by this coronavirus, I don't go, and then the cure in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You your word, you said, okay. I am the Lord. That he lets be. Yes, Lord. I sent my word. Yes, Lord. And I heal the diseases. Amen. Father, Lord God, I am sending your word to every four corner of the whole world right now. Jesus. That everyone that has been visited by coronavirus, Father, Lord God, we pray right now that you send your word and heal their Amen. plague and their diseases in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Because you are the one that can do it. Yes, Lord. You are the half and the only. Yes, Lord. You are the I am that I am. Yes, Lord. Because you are the merciful God. Yes, Lord. We give grace. Thank you, we Jesus. We give you honor. Thank you, we give Jesus. Your thank you, Jesus. Because you have done it. Hallelujah. We say thank you. Thank you, Lord. With our, with our exalted and forevermore. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, today, because I am talking about Christ as the solution for us. When Christ came, before he died, he was hung on the cross of Calvary. He did a singular act that he said should be done in remembrance of him. That when we do it, whatever we are faced with, we will 
be able to overcome it. And that is why I'm presenting to us a communion. I want to encourage us in our homes, in this turbulent period, in this turbulent period, that we have come short of the glory of God. And we are now using this communion as a point of contact back to God, so that we can be able to do as He has instructed us. So that we can be able to do brilliantly for Him. So that we can be able to be out of this plague that we are in. 22. 22. So you know, because Christ Himself has shown us that He is the one that can make all things to happen. And that is why I'm telling everyone today that we should all come to Christ. Ensure that we follow what he has laid down for us. And that is, we should do this in remembrance of him. And that is communion. Communion. Holy communion has been given to us. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 27 says, For I have received of the Lord, that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night, in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This is do this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he also took the cup. Right now, I'll take the bread. I want us to pass it around. Then when we pass it around, we hold on to it and we Break the, break the bread just after I have done and we pass it around please and then when we pass around the bread right we all hold on to it we don't eat it until I signal that we should eat it the same way I will signal when we are supposed to clean the blood of Jesus and verse 25 says, After the same man also, he took the cup when he had sucked, saying, This cup is New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. As For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do shew the, Lord, the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. That is in 1 Corinthians chapter 20, 11, verse 23 to 27. Also, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16 to 17. The cup of blessing which, was, which we bless is, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we have been many, are uh, one bread and one body. For we are all partakers of the one bread. Also, let us look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 to 19. For as much as you know that you are not redeemed with these corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by the tradition from, from your father, but with the precious blood of Jesus as a lamb without blemish and without spots. Mm -hmm. We must share communion today to be able to do as we have been instructed, to do it in remembrance of what Christ came to do for us, the care to our curse. That is why I want us today to share this communion and make sure that as we are drinking it and as we are taking it, the care to the curse, not only to us, but to the whole world, mm -hmm. is realized mm -hmm. and as is happening right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let us now take the bread, let us break the bread and let us eat it. I'm imploring us. In our homes, Christ has laid the example. 
He said we should break the bread and we should always drink the blood of Jesus. We should know that in the land of Egypt, when they were besieged by the plague, and the people of Israel, they were in the land of Goshen, God himself gave a directive, an instruction, when the last plague, that is the tenth plague, happened. And that is when the angel of death was passing around the land of Egypt. Just like coronavirus is passing around today. And they said, to tell all the people of my, of my people, people of Israel, to kill the lamb and put the blood of the lamb on their lintel so that when the angel of death passes, it will pass over them. And now, God has given us the lamb of God, which has come to die for our sin, which has shed his blood for us. And that lamb of God, I'm pleading that right now. I'm putting the Lamb of God's blood Amen. on the lintel of every house in the Amen. world today. Now, as the angel of coronavirus is passing, he shall pass us by and go to the to the to the deep and the abyss right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now let us pass the, the wine around. And let us drink. Because Amen. as we are drinking this blood, we are drinking. Life. Amen. We are drinking healing. Amen. We are drinking kill. Amen. We are drinking life. Amen. To our body. Amen. And God has given us that cure that we need. That's the solution to our problem. And that is Christ that was raised Amen. on the cross. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood, in the blood of the Lamb. Of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There is power, there is power, power, wonder walking power in the blood, in the blood of the Lamb, of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder walking power in the blood. Another opportunity you have given to us Thank you, Lord. to eat your flesh Thank you, and to drink your blood. Thank you, and we know as you have eaten your bread, your, your body, and you have drank your blood, Amen. that we have drank life Amen. into our body. Amen. We have drank solution Amen. into our body. Amen. We have drank care Amen. into our body. Amen. And we are standing in the gap for the people of the whole world Amen. that this coronavirus will be a thing of the past in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We shall celebrate. Amen. We shall rejoice. Amen. We shall have testimonies Amen. for what God has done because He has given us victory Amen. over coronavirus Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, Lord. Because of what you have done. Thank you. We Jesus. give you glory. Hallelujah. Say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. Thank you, Jesus. that you have given to us. Thank you, Lord. We thank you thank because you are not taking your grace for granted. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your grace. Yes, Lord, that has been sufficient for us. Yes, Lord, and I will continue to be sufficient for us. Amen. We say thank you. Thank you, Lord. We are exalted in Jesus. Amen. 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 As we go in the week, go with us. Amen. Our Lord God, this is the end of death, cockroach virus. Our Lord God, wipe it for us in the mighty name. Amen. As you have given us the cure. Which is Christ. Yes. The cure. Father God, let us embrace him Amen. in totality Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let us all acknowledge him Amen. and see him as the cure Amen. which you have presented to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let us live our holy ways 
and come to the realization of you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your grace. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We are exalted now forevermore. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Let us share the grace together. In May, unity. The grace of May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 Amen.